So let's uh, let's also because you asked this question, let's actu actually uh, figure out what is the basis functions for piecewise linear continuous uh, space, right? So let's let's figure out what can, how can we choose these basis functions? So let's imagine we have a space of simply four intervals going from 0 to 1. We have x1, x2, x3 here. So let's say this is 0, this is 1. And one of the simplicities of finite element comes from the fact that we can choose basis functions that are local. By local, <coughs> I mean a function that is zero in most part of the domain. Okay. So for example, how can we, what kind of function can we choose so that the basis, the first basis function, let's just try to get the basis function. Can I choose a function that is only non-zero within the first element, within the first interval? How can we construct a function that is piecewise linear and continuous and only non-zero in the first interval? Just go from 1 back to 0 and, and stay 0 for the rest of the domain, exactly. That's a very good idea of constructing a function that is local, right? So let's keep this as our first function in our basis. Okay, can we construct a function that is only non-zero in the second element? Because it has to be continuous on both sides. If a function is zero at x1 and zero at x2, then it has to be zero within the whole interval, right? So we can't construct a function that is only non-zero in the second element, but can we construct something that is different from the first one, but only non-zero in the first two elements. How do we do that? Huh? Uh, what? A hat function, right. So the hat function, I think what you are referring to is a function that starts over zero here. It gets to one at the grid point x1 and go back to zero at x2. And then it also stays zero for the rest of the domain, right? Similarly, we can construct other hat functions. Function that stays zero in the first element, goes to one here, goes back to zero here. Similarly, we can construct another hat function that stays zero here and do this. And the boundaries are actually a special case because it's a hat function where the other half of the hat is outside the domain, right? So it's kind of a one-sided hat function. Now in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five basis functions. So the question is, can these five basis functions represent any continuous and piecewise linear function where the pieces are these four elements over here? Or if I have an arbitrary function that is piecewise linear, okay, can I represent this gray function using a linear combination of these five basis functions we constructed? And if so, how do we do that? If no, can you construct a counterexample? So this, I have a gray function f of x. How, uh, the, the question I was asking is, how do you represent f of fx? as a linear combination of phi1 of x, phi2 of x, phi3 of x, phi4 of x, and phi5 of x. How, how do you do that? So, so the, the gray function would be what times phi1 of x plus what times phi2 of x. So let's say if you know the exact form of fx, how do you uh, how do you figure out the linear combination coefficients? So, well, 
So the, the basis function has to be one at the node. Yes. At zero else. Yes. The the basis functions are <coughs> one at each node. Exactly. So so phi one is equal to one. Well, let me let me name them differently. Let me let me name them as phi zero, phi one, phi two, phi three, and phi four, so that the place they are equal to one coincides with the numbering of the grid points. Right. So so if we do this, uh, can you help figure out what are the linear combination coefficients? Zero, eight, five, five. So this is the first linear combination coefficient is f of what? Zero f of 0 okay the second one oh this is 0 yeah okay okay so this is the first one is f of 0 and the second linear combination coefficient f of x1 right the value of x at x1 so so if you multiply f0 with phi 0 of x because phi 0 at x equal to 0 is equal to 1. If you multiply this, the green function is going to be scaled to a value that is equal to f0 at, at x equal to 0. So this is the green function after this scaling. And if you look at phi of 1 after the scaling by f of x1, remember this is f of x1. After you scale phi 1 to f of x1, the red function is going to be like that, right? That already allows us to reconstruct this gray line in the first element, in the first interval. So this green line, the scaled green line plus the scaled red line is going to be equal to the gray, li gray line in the first interval. And similarly, if we scale phi of 2 by f of x2, the black line after the scaling, because this is f of x2, after the scaling, the function becomes this. So the scaled red line and the scaled black line, they combine together, is going to reconstruct this function f in the second interval. <laughs> so the blue line after scaling by a negative number f of x3 which is here is going to become this. Right, so this negative hat is the scaled uh, scaled blue line and uh, combined with the scaled black line it is going to reconstruct this gray line in the third interval and lastly, once we scale phi 4 by f of x4, or f of 1, we are going to get the scaled green line, which combined with the blue line is going to give us f of x in the last interval. Any questions so far in how do we represent a piecewise linear function, piecewise linear and continuous function using these hat functions? So this is not just a true for this particular division we into four intervals but this can be done for any subdivision of any interval in one dimensions right if you have any subdivision of any interval you can construct the hat function so that they are equal to one at one grid points and equal to zero at all other grid points and once you have the value of the function at the grid points, you can simply connect the dots to form a hat function. Now you have all the hat functions, you scale the hat function by value, by the value of any particular known function at the corresponding grid points, you're gonna get a, a collection of scaled hat functions. Once you sum up the scaled head functions, you get the function you are trying to reconstruct. So this is an example of how do you use a basis set to represent any function within a linear space.